In this session, we're going to be looking at the new time editor in Maya 2017 and how you can use it to edit and retime your animations. Now, this is an animation example from The Witcher Cinematics. It is a motion capture session where the Witcher is fighting against a monster. It's an elf, and the two actors are fighting against each other. The Witcher is, is using a sword or actually a stick in the, in the mocap session. And the other character would actually fight with his hands, but the actor is wearing these tonfas to protect his arms from the stick that the other actor is using. Let me play the animation to show you what they are doing here. So they're doing this fight here. And at one point, the witcher gets injured. That's here. And then he throws the other character and tries to kill her with the sword. And the problem with that scene or the problem with that situation is that the other character is already, you know, standing up. So to protect each other, of course, he would not try to hit the head of the other character with his stick or his sword in, in reality. But, you know, the illusion is actually not very good when, when you see that the other character is standing up and he's, po you know, poking into the empty space. And we want to correct that and change that a little bit using the time editor. So there's a little bit of retiming involved. And maybe we can also change some of the animation that happens on the Witcher skeleton. And to be able to layer other animation on top of that, we need a rig, of course. So in this example here, the two characters are just... When I switch on the X-ray for the skeleton, the two characters are just animated skeletons. As you can see here, when I, when I select one of the bones, you see the curves in the graph editor and all the keyframes in the timeline. It's just an animated skeleton. And I would take that animated skeleton and go into the human IK panel and, ch and select that character and then bake this animation onto the control rig. So I can simply take the complete animation and let Maya create a new control rig and have all the animation on the control rig. So now when I select one of the nodes here, the foot, for example, you see the curves in the graph editor. And now I would have the ability to take this and move the foot around and do some layered animation on top of that. So that's possible with the control rig. It's exactly the same motion, so we are not losing anything. At least in this example, we are not losing anything. And it's also very easy to do that because the bones already have the correct names because they were using Motion Builder to capture this animation. So the same for the other character, for Gerald. We go into Bake Animation and bake the complete thing to the control rig. And then I can you see the whole animation here now and then I can switch off the x-ray because we don't need to see the skeleton all the time. Okay, good so far. So now the complete animation is on this node here or on this node respectively. So the two characters are using the control rig now for the animation. I would then take this reference node, you know, the top node for the complete control rig and the two tonfas and go into the time editor and in the time editor you will see there's a big button here in the uh, in the middle of the time editor that lets me add the selected objects as content for the time editor it's the same button as this one here so for the first one you can use this one here and it creates an animation clip so this animation clip now contains all of the animation of this monster you can rename the clip so we can call it monster for example monster clip and you can also mute the whole thing so you can switch off the complete time editor so no animations happening so now only the witcher is moving because the other character is muted the animation has been transferred to this clip here right and then we we will do the same thing for the other character so for the gerald character and his sword and add those to an animation clip rename it to be Gerald so that we can tell from by the name at least what clip is, is using and I can also go into the attribute editor for example and go down here and change the clip color so that's a very nice possibility to say hey I want uh, you know the other clip have a different color 
to be able to tell the clips apart. So now oh, maybe that's a bit too dark. Right, so Gerald clip and monster clip. So now the two clips have easy to recognize colors. So the as I said, we we or I'm I'm trying to work on a very specific moment in time when when the problem is happening, and that is some somewhere here. You know, he takes her, throws her down, and then does this. And my problem with this was um, most of the time to remember this position where the head should be a few moments before because when you scroll back and forth you tend to lose you can point with the finger on the on the monitor or you can also place something so I created little cubes and place them there but a very easy method for that is to create a, a motion trail so here in the visualize you find the motion trails and of course, I'll hit undo with this one here. We don't need the complete timeline. So we, we should go from somewhere here. Actually, when he throws her down like so, from somewhere here to when she stands up, that's enough. And I made myself even a hotkey for framing the playback range. Shift F uh, frames this playback range. And now when I create that motion trailer will only be the time in the in the playback range so now we can clearly see this bluish line is the time i can change the background color a little bit so this bluish line here that's the place where the head needs to be and we you know when we look at the motion here we see also see that she's sliding actually when she when he throws her down bang and let's have a look from the top a little bit. You see that she's sliding away from that position. Initially, the head would have been there, but now she's sliding away. So we need to stop that somehow, and we that that would be a second step. So in the first step, I, I want to change the timing. And the way to do that is to cut this clip in pieces and, and retime them, scale the timing a little bit. And I found that I need to make two cuts. So cut the whole clip into three pieces. So we start from somewhere here. Let's say this doesn't matter, you know, the timing is not so critical. So I can make the cut here. It's a, you know, the cut hotkey is W. It's actually this one here, split the clip at the current time. And then the next cut would be when, when she's about to move away. So somewhere you know, she's barely starting to move. So somewhere here, we make the second cut like so. And that is, you know, this gap here or this cut, that's the piece that we need to move. So when he's about to put the sword down like so, you know, he's here somewhere and we want to make sure that she's not so far away. So I'm going to scale this clip here and we have a scaling tool. Let's take this one. So with the scaling tool, I'm going to make, and you see when, you know, when the time slide is here, you can see what happens as a result when I scale the whole thing here. When I scale it so, now her head would be over there. And I'm, I'll scale the other part as well. And you can see as long as I'm holding the, the key down, you see I scaled it by 123%. And the other one, Oops, yeah, that's the original timing. So we can see it in the attribute editor how much it is scaled. So 95% roughly, that is the scaling. So now I can, you know, watch it and you see this is much closer, except maybe that the fact that the head has never been there in this, in this location. So that is the second thing that we want to do. And we can do that by relocating the whole animation data. We can relocate it in, you know, take all the transform information and, and add something on top of it. That is this function here, create a relocator. This works with a selected clip. So the relocator will only work as long as we are on one of the clips. And here at the border, it would simply say, OK, the relocation has ended. You have to redo it for the other clip. I could do it for the complete clip before I even start to retime everything. And then it would duplicate these relocators in the outliner. You, you could see that. But that's nothing I want to do. So the solution here is to take all of these clips 
all three pieces and group them. So I'm doing control G here. And in this group, my original timing, my original clip pieces are still in the group. So I can still work on these pieces, but I can do put a relocator on this top group. And that's very cool. So let's say we want to, to relocate this a little bit. And um, maybe, you know, when he puts her down on the ground, so maybe from, from here, I want to start a relocator, bang. So coming from this group here, and that's why it's called group relocator. So this is now a keyframe or some sort of a zero keyframe. I simply hit the S key. You see a keyframe appears for this relocator. It's just a transform in the outliner, an independent transform. And then later, you know, when she has moved a little bit, you see how she slides away. I want to move the whole thing. So you see also, oh, my pivot is somewhere, you know, away from where she actually is. I can hold down my, my D key to relocate the pivot and move the pivot over here, no problem at all. So now I would take her and move her a little bit, like so, and hit the S key. And then we'll see how that works and you see whoa the sliding has almost stopped so there's a little bit you know after these this keyframe that i set there is a little bit sliding going on but you know the head is in a much better position he's really aiming at the head now even though you know at the from the correct camera position which would be somewhere here the camera is looking at the whole thing from the side so now he puts her down bang and whoop, she needs to go away, but the timing is much better. I can now delete this motion trail, simply select it and remove it. And let's play that. Bang. Yes, much better. You know, looks much more like he's very close to getting her. Okay, the other thing that I want to maybe correct, it's just an idea to show you what we can do with these clips here. So for the Witcher himself, you see he's he's aiming at her, but he's not looking at her. I don't know what happened in the mocap session with the head. So he's not looking at, you know, the point where, where he, you know, he should look at her head somehow. So what we can do here is to create for this clip um, take the head and then select the clip also and create an additive layer. So we are adding some animation on top of it. It's the same as animation layers were before. So if I have this object selected when I create the layer, then all of these channels are part of the layer already. So what I can do here now is to set a zero key somewhere here. And then when it becomes important, I can make changes and say, Okay, I want the head to be a little bit more in this direction. Oh, and you see the head is jumping back. What is that? So that comes from the fact that um, Human IK has different ways to deal with transforms and rotations. And you see in this case here, um, the panel, the Human IK panel is saying tra transforms are more important than rotations. So I need to put this at one and then you see the head moving. Put it down here you see it more clearly so now you see the head is moving here and now i can do something with the head rotation i want him to look in this direction somehow set a keyframe and then later maybe set a zero key again because you know now he can do whatever he wants with the head Bang, we can set more keyframes, but you can clearly see how easy it is to animate on top of the whole thing. And then to group the, the thing and, you know, cut it again, shift it around, scale it in time, and etc., etc., and, and put the pieces together. You can even blend things together by just shifting these clips on top of each other. So it's a very easy and very powerful way to edit your animation. So this was a short example with the cinematics of the Witcher um, using the time editor to edit and correct the animation.